Before I decided to invest my efforts into becoming a YouTuber, for some unknown reason, I had hopes of working in the animation industry. As you can clearly see, that didn't exactly go as planned for a number of reasons, but that's a different story. What I'd like to talk about for my first video is where I started in animation and art as a career. And that start would be in my time at an art college learning 2D and 3D animation. Now I'm sure the image most people get when they hear the words art college is that of some fancy, expensive building with a big campus and a bunch of pretentious, pompous art students coming and going. Well, we had the pretentious students, but not much else. The building was actually an old elementary school, built sometime in the early 19... who gives a fucks. It's now a historical building, and has been repurposed, poorly I might add, into an art college. This building absolutely sucked for a number of reasons. There's no way I could get into all of them in this video without it turning into a two-hour rant. Trust me, this is my third time recording this video. Hopefully a script will keep me on track this time. So instead, I'm just going to start with three stories for now. So without further ado, let's actually get into why this school was such an absolute shithole. So, as previously mentioned, this school was a historical building. That means the administration wasn't allowed to change or update the building in any way. In fact, they didn't even own the building. The city was just renting it to them because, I don't know, I guess they figured they could make more money that way? But yeah, no changes, I guess, meant they also weren't allowed to properly fix anything either, because there were some places where it legitimately looked like the building was falling apart. Take, for example, the lunchroom. It wasn't really a lunchroom. It was actually just the end of a hallway that made up the main floor where a table, some chairs, a mini fridge, coffee maker, and all that other crap artists need to survive were all just thrown into a corner and called a lunchroom. The point of this is that on the ceiling above this lunchroom was, I guess at some point, a hole? Not anymore, though. Instead, there was just an old, shitty-looking board that had just been haphazardly nailed to the ceiling over the hole, and for some reason painted over as if we wouldn't notice a 3 by 5 foot ish board nailed to the fucking ceiling. It was especially hard not to notice, because in the winter it leaked. And where I live, winters are long and very wet, so for probably eight to nine months out of the year, the ceiling above where you're eating just dripped constantly. They'd have buckets out there a few times to deal with it rather than, you know, actually fixing the problem like a useful administration would do. Another sign of how old this school was was in the windows. They were these giant 10 to 12 foot high windows on both the first and second floor, they had never been changed out from when this was an elementary school, you know, a hundred or so years ago, so they were still single-pane, uninsulated glass in heavy-ass, solid wood framing. Because of how massive and uninsulated they were, they let in a lot of heat in the summer and cold in the winter. And of course, as I'll keep coming back to, this was a historical building, and windows couldn't exactly be swapped out for modern ones without ruining the facade. So what they did to solve this issue was tape big sheets of bubble wrap over the windows in place of insulation. A funny thing that a friend of mine discovered was during a break between classes, I think. I was standing out in the hallway talking with my friend, who goes by the name of Strike Online, we were just talking about something or other, bored out of our minds because there was absolutely nothing to do on breaks. As a way of alleviating our immense boredom, Strike decided to pop some of the bubble wrap. Rather than popping like one would expect from such an action, the bubble instead flaked and crumbled away at her touch. 
She poked another one with the same result, and in that moment we realized that the bubble wrap had been left up on the windows, soaking up sunlight for so long that the plastic had desiccated and lost all ability to hold enclosed pockets of air. It had just become a hollow husk in the shape it had remained in for ages, like the shell of a cicada clinging to a tree or something. We were understandably shocked by this revelation, but also found it really funny because it pretty much confirmed everything we had thought about how much of a shithole everything in this school was. Speaking of windows, the room we probably spent most of our time in, short of the computer lab which I'll have to get to another time, was the drawing room. This room was upstairs and had the same massive windows as everywhere else in the school. Though the main difference here was that because this room was meant for figure and still life drawing, and one very strange acting class, which again I'll have to talk about some other time, because of this it had no bubble wrap so it wouldn't keep all of the nice natural light out that we needed to draw with. This of course also meant there was nothing keeping the heat out. Luckily the windows opened in this room, but not properly. So. One of the problems was that opening the windows wasn't exactly an easy task in and of itself. They almost seemed like they had been painted to their frames or glued in place, and the way they'd stick in place, you'd really have to just jam the thing up there if you wanted them to move. The second problem was they only stuck in place when they were closed. When they were open, they had a tendency to just fall for no reason. And keep in mind, these are the same solid wood and 1900s glass windows as everywhere else in the school. So that means that whatever was under them when they inevitably fell was gonna get crushed or cut off. The solution to this problem was as half-assed as everything else in this fucking school. Whenever they opened the windows, they just shove a brick or branch or whatever other crap they had lying around that they'd throw on a table for us to draw, because that's apparently what we were paying $15,000 a year for, and just throw them into this window to prop up this just constant safety hazard that we had surrounding us at all times. One other issue was that, you know, this used to be an elementary school, so nothing was really college student height. The windows were really fucking low is what I'm saying, like barely up to hip height. If you took a tumble, you were going right out onto the pavement below, most likely with shards of ancient lead-based glass to cushion your organs, because those windows wouldn't do shit to stop a fall. Unfortunately that's about all the stories I have time for in this video. Uh, if there's a demand for it, I'll make a follow-up video because there was pretty much no limit to the number of problems with this school that I have yet to even touch on. I haven't even talked about the actual classes yet. Those were a whole nother thing that I'll probably have to get to in a separate set of videos. Oh, and here's a fun way to end this. I recently learned that the school is going to be demolished. Or maybe it already has been by the time this comes out. So yeah, remember all that stuff about them not being able to change anything because it was a historical building? Yeah, I guess that's all out the window now. Apparently everyone got their classes cancelled midway through their term, people got evicted, and there's a good chance nobody's getting their money back for anything. Oh, and as an added bonus, this is what's currently on their website at the time of recording. Good job, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please press all the buttons and follow me in all the places. I hope to see you next time, but until then, good night.